We're going to switch a little bit here. It is uh, Fourth of July week. That's about the, uh, the whatever uh, of his uh, his uh, work so far, but uh, thank God that we can still say yes. we're free. Yes. 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 We can meet together like this yes. Yes. without any hesitations or anxieties or any of that. But there was a price to pay. Amen. There is still a price to pay. Yes, right. I've titled my message, uh, Let Freedom Ring. 
Let freedom ring. Hallelujah. Galatians 5 and 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I thank God for political freedom. But there's a freedom beyond political freedom. Amen. As our president has made his plea and made his candidacy to make America great again, it's a great thought. But the only thing that's going to make America great again is when America falls on its face before God and proclaims we are nothing without His blessing. We were founded upon the principles of the Word of God. And if we're ever going to be great again, we've got to get back to the principles of the Word of God. And maybe one thing that President Trump hasn't thought about, but maybe we need to pray that he will say it's time to put the, the Ten Commandments back in our... our, our uh, not schools, the, 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 what am I trying, the courtrooms where they've taken them down where all of our laws are based upon the Ten Commandments. And that if we really want to see something happen, then make a proclamation to put those uh, Ten Commandments back in our courtrooms and even in our schools. So the greatest freedom that we can experience is the spiritual freedom that you and I are enjoying here in this service tonight. Uh, you know, on the 4th of July, we can't know the totality of every life that has been lost for our freedom. Before television ever became where we could see what was happening in these wars such as the Civil War and all of these other wars, Korean, Vietnam War, we really didn't see what we see today because of all the satellites and all that we're made to see. I used to wonder how is the whole world going to see those two men that will fall dead and be raised again until all of this has happened in our communication to tell all that we can see around the world in an instance. That's how it's going to happen. But I thank God for all the blood that was shed for our freedom. But as we think about it, and we can move into a freedom that I wish that we could make it real to everybody in the world. Romans, G, uh, Paul wrote, he said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. We hear testimonies of men and women that have saved their buddies' lives, taken the bullets for them or whatever it is that they could protect them from getting killed. And many of them have such a difficult time if they're the only ones that spared in some war zone and, and it makes them feel guilty. Why wasn't I one of them? Why was I spared? But uh, here he says, but God, say but God, but God commends His love toward us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When, while we were yet, I was went to a funeral one time on the Air Force base out here and that preacher read it, while we are yet sinners. No, while we were sinners, right. when we are washed in the blood of the Lamb as we sung about tonight, we are free from our yes. sins. We are free from condemnation. We are free from all the things that the enemy would try to put upon us. I think more often than what we do, we should plead the blood of Jesus when we begin to see things coming against us that the devil wants to destroy us, wants to put us down under, wants to absolutely annihilate us from, from off the face of the earth. But thank God that Jesus, I was not lovable. You were not lovable. We were not... We were not worthy of His death. Not a one of us. There's none of us that could say, well, I was one of those that, you know, thank God He saved me, but I was a pretty good guy before I ever found Jesus. You know, it's harder to get someone to see the need of salvation that is a good man than someone that's not a good man. 
I hate to say this, but my husband was one of them. He didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't curse, at least around me he didn't. Well, he told one time uh, when he was working with his brother on the farm and he mashed his finger and he said, praise the Lord. His brother looked at him and he said, I know there's been a change in you, Johnny. <laughs> Hallelujah. The little things that show people that there's been a change in us. Hallelujah. But none of us were worthy to receive His precious blood and His sacrifice. And it was ugly. It wasn't beautiful. You know, we sometimes paint it and we think it's just so wonderful and so and even when he was born in that stable, I could imagine the stench that was in that stable that night. It was not a hotel. It was not a motel. It was a place where cattle uh, dwelt and whatever else lives or whatever. And it stunk. I am sure it stunk. Yes. It stink up. Yes. And when he died on the cross... He was so marred and bruised and beaten that He was unrecognizable. But that's the price that He paid for us. To have the freedom and the liberty that we have today. Not only, we, as I said, politically we do, but that could end any day now. We don't know what's in the future for us. But John said it this way, we perceive the love of God because He laid down His life for us. He laid it down. He said, I could call 10,000 angels at this very moment and deliver me from this death. But out there in Gethsemane, as He prayed, there was the battle. That was where the battle was fought and won. He said, Father, if it be Your will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, Father, not my will, but Thy will be done. Hallelujah. It was an awesome, gruesome death. But beyond anything that we could even imagine, a man that was spotless, sinless, had never, ever, ever done any sin at all. Perfect Lamb of God. And yet He was bruised and beaten and... Uh, ridiculed and, and all of that just for us. Just for you. Just for me. Hallelujah. Oh, we can all quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we sing that song. I traded my old filthy garment for a robe of pure white. Hallelujah. You know, we have to understand that we are washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that makes us as white as the driven snow. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. If we began to look at each other like that instead of our humanity, the Bible says, you know, we used to know Jesus in the flesh but we don't, and we don't know each other. We shouldn't know each other by the flesh. We need to look beyond the flesh and realize that we are redeemed, blood washed, born again, new creations in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He said the Son of Man did not come to be ministered to, although He was ministered to at times, but He came to minister. The Bible says, and to give His life a ransom for many. Whosoever will, whosoever will may come. And greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. But we were not a friend of God. We were not a friend of God. I didn't know how to love God until Jesus revealed Himself in me. And then I had a love that I'd never experienced. You had a love that you'd never experienced. I trust you did. Because when I got filled with the Holy Ghost that night, the love of God saturated me. I had joy like I'd never had. And the first time in many years, Brother McGarity, I laid down in peace. Hallelujah. I didn't want to go to sleep. I thought he'd be gone the next morning. Oh, but it was still there because it's a work of the Spirit. It's a work of the blood of Jesus that comes and makes us whole. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when I see the old flag waving, 
You know, it almost gives you chills. I'm very patriotic. I, I, I'm glad, as I said, that I am an American. But you know what? With, with this privilege, it, it, it has a great, grave responsibility upon us. And our nation, although we get sometimes a, a bit upset because we send our military everywhere to try to, to bring freedom to nations, and, and really many of them don't even want freedom. When Russia came out from under the rule of communism, you know what? They didn't even know how to live. They didn't even know how to act. They, they didn't know what to do. They were so used to being told what to do. But thank God that we have the privilege of being an American. Amen. And we don't need to abuse it. It's like a young person that gets a driver's license and, and abuses that privilege of driving a car and gets the driver's license taken away from us. But all oh, thanks be to God. He loves us enough. And He says, I, I'm, I'm sitting at the right hand of the Father to make intercession for you. Oh, think about it, church. We have an advocate with the Father. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't just a, a one-time thing. Yes, he, he, he gave Himself a ransom for many. He, see, I said this recently, but, but when He saw Mary in the garden and He said, don't touch me, uh, He said, I haven't yet gone to the Father. Somewhere between that and when He went in the room where the disciples were gathered together for fear, I believe He went to the throne room of God and He presented Himself, that sinless Lamb of God that covers and eradicates and washes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah! How can that happen? I don't know. Honey, it's supernatural. It's not natural blood. Oh, we sing a song about that. It wasn't just the blood from another spotless lamb, but it was the only blood that could cleanse us from sin. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Now, I've got a couple of things going here. And, and, and you can see I'm kind of waffling and trying to get my way through this because that's not what I'm going to end on. And Peter says, we're free, but don't use your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there's some people go around just putting everybody down and, and, and uh, bad-mouthing people and judging people and all of this. But he said, we're not to use our liberty. We're not to abuse our liberty. We need to be thankful for our liberty in this America and in our hearts. Amen? Hallelujah. Sometimes, I got this in counts. We act as though the world owes us something. <laughs> Have you ever been around people like that that feel like the world owes them something? <laughs> Peter, or Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 9.19 For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. We have a responsibility to proclaim this message of freedom. It's the 4th of July. We're going to be celebrating it with fireworks. And I've got something I can read you in a moment that one of the presidents wrote to his wife. When we are set free, we should want others to know this freedom. America's fighting to free others. It's called for the Christian evangelism. Paul said, I am debtor. Or do you feel like a debtor to society, to people that aren't saved? He said, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. For as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and I'm glad he said, and also to the Greek. Oh, hallelujah. But we know that it's through the blood of Jesus that we are set free from sin. How many of you here tonight have been covered with the blood of Jesus? How many know that your sins have been washed away by the blood of the Lamb? But I want to go a little step further because you and I, in order 
to propagate this freedom to other people have got to have what we call the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. Isaiah put it this way, because of the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. So many people say the yoke is broken. No, the yoke is destroyed. That yoke that was upon your life by the blood of Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It, you know, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. And I was thinking about that earlier. Could that be the anointing? Take my yoke upon you. It's light. It's easy. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, when I get under the anointing of God, there, nothing hurts, nothing bothers me. Hallelujah. I'm just as free as I can be. The anointing destroys every yoke. As Kathy has been sharing with me, it's the anointing, Sister Kathy, that has destroyed those yokes that have been upon you. Hallelujah. Some of you sitting here to, uh, tonight, you've got yokes on you that you shouldn't be carrying. I, I, I'm not going to try to name them. I don't know what they are. But you know, when I read, the thing that released me about the rapture is this, you know, because we argue. Some believe in pre-trib, some mid-trip and some post-trip and, and Brother Truran up in Cottonwood he used to say, well I believe in the panism theory, it'll all pan out. We don't know exactly what all is going to happen but when I read in Luke's Gospel Jesus said, don't be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life so that that day overtakes you as a thief. But he said, pray that you may be worthy to escape all all of these things. Listen, saints, I'm looking for the upper taker. Hallelujah. I'm looking for the rapture because it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Just as sure as my name and more sure than what my name is, the rapture of the church is going to happen and the tribulation is awaiting those who have shunned the gospel. But oh, can we get a fresh glimpse to realize that we need the anointing. We cannot reach the lost without the anointing of the Holy Ghost! In the book of Acts, uh, I guess it was, uh, I don't know who was saying this, uh, I've got it marked in my Bible, he talked about the Word of God that was published uh, in all Judea and Galilee and the, and the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with Him. Amen. Listen, we sit here, we're free from sin. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Every once in a while, I have to get under the blood spout. Say, Jesus, wash me again. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I preached just recently, I think Thursday night, about the heart. It's desperately wicked. And I do like David. He said, oh God, search me and know my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Hallelujah. But church, if we ever needed the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon our lives and flowing in our churches, it's the hour in which we're living. No longer can we be spectators and enjoying the blessings of God. May we begin to put our feet to work, our hands to work, our mouths to work, and proclaim the gospel under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That is not just for the pulpit. Let me assure you, it's not just for preachers that stand up and preach. Hallelujah. But the anointing, He said, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And upon my handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my Spirit. Hallelujah. We need the anointing 24-7. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just come to church and we get under the spout where the glory comes out. But how about if we walk in it seven days a week, 24 hours a day, saying, God, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Can we be like Jesus? He went everywhere, 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 yes, preaching yes. the gospel, healing the sick, casting out devils, because God was with him and anointed him. Amen. Amen. We are the anointed of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. And we just sit so still and so sedate and so serene. We're just glad that we're saved. Oh, Isaiah 
And Jesus read it in the temple. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's preached, He's anointed me to bind up. I may not have it in order, but I'm going to get it all in. To bind up the broken. See, He's anointed us to bind up the brokenhearted. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To open prison doors. Hallelujah. That's us, church. When are we going? See, the Assemblies of God, Brother McGarity, they, they used to come to Lighthouse and, and they wouldn't know who was the preacher or not because our young people would stand up, our young adults with the Bible in their hand and they would just practically preach because the anointing was flowing and was upon every one of them. One young man would get up on the back of his pickup. He worked in concrete and he would preach to his fellow workers. Honey, do you know what kind of an audience that you have with guys that are in construction putting down cement? Oh, having that kind of like Peter, you know, and, and the, the fisherman, just about that same kind of a sort, you know. But, but the anointing of God was upon them. We had people saved every service. And it wasn't me, honey. It was the people that got a hold of this thing and they began to get anointed by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. And it came because they waited upon the Lord. Yes. I would get to church and the young adults would be at the altar praying. But what, And the older people for a while, they'd come in, oh no, they're at it again. But I want you to know pretty soon, it was flowing over on everybody. Oh, we'd have church until after midnight. I'm telling you months on end. I am not telling you a story because God was moving. It was the anointing. Oh God, give us the anointing in believers. Yes. Stop relegating it to the preacher and thinking they're the anointed. No, we are the anointed. Yes. <laughs> we have a weapon that we can bring deliverance. We can bring freedom. We can be, bring peace and joy to the hearts of people. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about freedom. You want to stay free? Stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may think you don't need the Holy Ghost. But I'm here to tell you, honey, you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, son. Amen. Hallelujah. I got a buddy over here, let me tell you. He's asking me how I'm doing. He's keeping up with me. Hallelujah. The anointing. The anointing. The anointing. That, that, that power that comes on us that's fearless. Fearless! Oh, I don't know. I better not say anything to them. I don't know how they'll take it. Well, do tell. Let them die and go to hell. Because you're afraid to say something. All of us should be able to lay hands on people and see them. I had a man one time would bring people to, to me, a guy that he'd witnessed to. He didn't know how to lead him to the Lord. He had been in the Assembly of God Church for years on end. He didn't know how to lead somebody to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> We've gone through, I, I mean, I've taught every plan of witnessing you can have the Roman road, the four spirits, whatever, spiritual law, I don't know, all those things. But the greatest thing is, let God work in you. Yes. And it will work out. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Because you see, it's not what we say, it's how it's coming out. Yes. I'll never forget the first time I heard David Wilkerson preach. He had the quietest delivery. You can feel it when he opened his mouth. The anointing. The anointing that destroys every yoke. And I think that's the yoke that Jesus said, Take my yoke. That anointing. He went about doing good, healing. 
See, we can sit here and thank God for my freedom. Thank God for your freedom. Yes. Your political and your spiritual freedom. Amen. But we've got a world that is dying without God. Young people right now that are committing suicide because they've lost all hope. Now listen, I, I don't want to send you on a crusade. I just want you to be what you are. Yes. Holy Ghost, anointed child of God, full of the Holy Ghost, full of grit and guts. Oh, yes, I know that's not proper for me. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. How many people do we pass every day? Come on. I'm not talking about going out and knocking on doors. I'm just talking about where you live and the people you know and the family members that you know. I remember when I first started preaching, my brother, he, he had emphysema. And uh, he had had a lot of other problems as a child because of a car accident that my dad and my other brother and him were in. <clears throat> and, and he was at my house when I had another couple there. And, and I just felt like I needed to talk to Harold. Uh, he was Baptist, Southern Baptist, and he loved God. And I said, I just, I, I need to talk to Harold. And I thought to myself, well, if I don't have enough courage to talk to my own brother, how am I going to go pastor a church? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it just worked out. Everybody left. It was just Harold and I. I, I don't know. I guess Johnny was there. I don't remember. All I remember was Harold and I. And I began to talk to him. I said, Harold, do you believe that Jesus can heal your body? He couldn't sing, and he had a beautiful voice. Well, I know if it's his will, he can do it. He said, maybe he's getting more glory. I said, what are you talking about? You can't even sing. What kind of glory is that? Now, I wasn't talking like that to him, you understand. But I took him to the Word that it was God's will to heal him. I shared it with him. Well, nothing really happened that night. But shortly thereafter, he goes to Miracle Valley after A. A. Allen was gone and there was a pastor down there. In fact, he preached for me at Lighthouse. And right now I couldn't tell you his name because I can't remember it. But they, my sister and my brother, I guess they took my dad down there. He had cancer. And they wanted him to pray for my dad. My brother and... My sister, and I guess my dad, I never did ask him. If, I suppose they took dad because they were going to have him prayed for. Her. But when they walked in his living room, he looked at Harold. He'd never seen Harold in all of his life. He said, God is going to give you a brand new set of lungs. Hallelujah. My brother shouted all over. And I guess that pastor <laughs> thought he was a Pentecostal. He wasn't. I don't think he ever got filled with the Holy Ghost. I tried to get him to get filled, but it never happened. But he shouted all over. He went back to the doctor, and he had the lungs of a 30-year-old. Daring to say what we know to say when we can say it. God made the way. One night they were at church, him and his wife, and his wife fought Pentecost. But you know what? When they needed prayer, something was happening. Do you know who they called? Right. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But she was. they were at church together, sitting on the back pew. And God was prompting me. Well, Harold was at the altar. And God was prompting me to go talk to Peggy. Oh, God. I was pretty young in the Lord, you have to understand. I don't know if I should do that. So as I'm walking back to her and tears start streaming down her face, I said, Peggy, because he said to me, it's bothering me, Peggy C. I said, he really would like for you to come to the altar with him. But before I ever got to her, God was already dealing with her. And she came down to the altar. I'm just saying, we are the anointed. I wasn't a preacher then, honey. I was a lay person in the church. I didn't even know I was called to preach. Sister, uh, Margaret, 
sister. From the time I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I had the anointing. Oh, honey, listen. I became a flaming evangelist. I thought, my friends, they just don't know about this. I've got to tell them about it. See, I was under the anointing. I'd been baptized in the Holy Ghost in Sunray, Texas. And I'd come home. I looked up the church. Tried to find where it was. I found it and began to go to church. But I had, some of y'all know this, I'd have coffee several times a week with the, the older farmer's wives. I was the kid on the block. I was only 17 when we got married. But we'd have coffee of the morning and and we'd sit around and talk. And I thought, I've got to tell them what has happened to me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And I began to witness to them. And the one looked at me. She said, oh, Shirley, you're young. You should be out partying and blah, blah, blah. I don't know how I looked at her, but I think my mouth might have dropped a little bit. I said, you don't understand. I don't want that stuff anymore. I've got something better than the world could ever. Hallelujah. The other one said, well, I've got one foot in hell and the other one, you know, one foot in the grave or hell, I think she said, and the other on the ground. She wasn't under conviction, but this other lady said to me, one day, how dare you tell me I'm going to hell? I didn't tell her that. I wouldn't do that. I'm not God. But I was telling them, you just don't know about this. I've got to tell somebody. I've got to tell somebody. Church, there's not enough happening in our lives that we want to tell anybody. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're stale. Stagnant. That's it. That's it. Amen. And I'm talking about myself. I put myself right with you. We're losing it, saints. We're losing that power of the anointing upon our lives. Yeah. And if we want to see God send revival, we've got to get under and, uh, and, and oh, involved and engulfed in the Spirit of God. Yes. There's just something about the anointing that when it's on you and you're and you know it, and it, Brother Ray, it penetrates. Absolutely. You feel it. It's yes. getting across. It's 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 digging in to the depths. Why do we want that? Well, Sister Kim, you know, I just have so much responsibility. I understand. I do. I do. I do. Mm -hmm. What do we want? Do this more. Now, see, when the service started tonight, I thought, man, this is it. And then y'all just kind of calmed down. The first, do you remember? Do you notice that that first song, man? Everybody was shouting and how, hallelujah! And then all of a sudden, it just kind of calmed down. What did you calm down? Come on. He said, "Well, Sister Kenzie, everybody's not as loud mouth as you are." I understand. My husband is, and I understand that. But listen, he can he can get moved. I've seen him. I, I've seen him move. I saw him run around the church one time in a look. I said, I don't think he can't be moved. <laughs> Anointing that destroys the yoke. Yes. They that wait upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I wish somehow I could stir you to the point yes. that you'd have to run to the altar. That doesn't happen anymore. We used to sing songs and while we were singing, people came to the altar. Yes. That doesn't happen anymore. But it should. It should. It should. God knows. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a song. This is what we need to pledge allegiance to.
of this city for this day that we're celebrating the freedom of our nation. But our spiritual freedom is so much more powerful than our political freedom. Oh
anointing, just a fresh outpouring in our lives, all of us, myself included. In the name of Jesus. 